Welcome to Keto and the Couch with Rachel and Joe, episode 45. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. I wish this Florida weather would make up its mind. This morning I woke up, it was like in the high sixties. I was cold. I wore a heavy sweatshirt. Yes. I came home. I changed from my heavy sweatshirt to a lightweight hoodie and I'm hot. At least it's not eight degrees. <laughs> Like it was last weekend when we were taping this. Well, did you see last week, as soon as we left Omaha, like they had a major snowstorm, I super am cold. I'm so sorry, but I am glad we didn't have to face that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it was weird because I don't know if you've ever had to get it, go through. We got on the plane and they're like, ah, excuse me, sir, but we're going to have to de-ice the plane. And so it's going to take a little bit longer. It scared me a little bit. I'm not, I'm going to be honest. It then, was, I was then, scared. Then the captain comes back on after about 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take about another 20 minutes because now that we've de-iced the plane, it looks like it's going to start snowing again. So we're going to have to spray some stuff so that nothing sticks to the plane as we take off. I'm like, what now? And the people behind us were like, can we just get in the air? They should have done this like two hours ago. I'm going, you really want them to de-ice the plane two hours before it's going to take off? Well, I was just like, if this is a safety precaution, let's just do everything we can do to be safe. Yeah. So it was, it was, overall, it wasn't bad. We were only 10 minutes behind getting to our connection and we still made our connection. But like some people have left their heart in San Francisco, I left my voice in Omaha. That is true hasn't come back <laughs> still there we talked to so many people rachel started losing her voice when we were in omaha yes and then i think we got home change in temperature then we had going to speak. back and forth then we had to like speak at church on wednesday for rachel and thursday for me and then we live streamed so it was just like there was no hope for my voice i got it a little bit back last night yeah but just enough <laughs> to prepare me for sunday but four services later and we're back. So how was everybody's week? Our week was kind of just getting back into routine, right? You almost need a vacation from the vacation. Fortunately, I didn't have a ton of laundry, but just putting everything away on top of whatever it is that you have to do in your normal week, I'm like, I'm sort of done adulting. What I have not yet figured out is we are in the middle of, while we're at home, and we did take a three-day break to go to Omaha. Yeah. We're in the middle of keto chow and keto brick only. And really, that's all keto chow for Rachel. Yeah. And coffee. And keto chow and a half a keto brick for me per day. How the dishes keep piling up when we're only drinking keto chow and the pile up of dishes is not including blender bottles. Yeah. Can somebody please explain to me how two children who are spending 50% of their time not eating at home yeah. are making that big of a pile of dishes? Does it give you more grace for people who have young children? Oh my gosh. Yes. And are generating even more dishes? <laughs> it's a thing. Dishes. So we are halfway through the month for our 31 day fast. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. It's, I just got to stay away from the scale because the scale goes up and down. I was happy though, that I came home from Keto Soma at Omaha and I actually weighed less than when I left. Which that is awesome. Which kind of shocked me a little bit because I didn't go off plan. We ate a lot of beef, that's for sure. We did. We ate a lot of beef. If you saw any of the vlogs, I mean, I'll leave a link for that playlist. We ate a lot of beef. But between that and I ate a lot of keto treats from the Omaha Bakery. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> they were delicious. They were so good. And I couldn't stop eating them. I mean, we ate like that, those little, what was that little container she had with the, the Girl Scout cookie thing in there? Oh, yeah. And the oatmeal thing. And then the lemon, like that lemon cheesecake piece. It was mock oatmeal. Like it was yeah. actual oatmeal. Whatever it was, 
but there were like four pieces in there and we ate three of those containers between the two of us. It was a delicious couple it of days. It was really good. So I was really happy to come home and find the scale lower than when I left. I've just enjoyed getting back on plan. Yep. And it's seeing the scale just kind of slowly descend and get rid of some of the holiday habits that I was getting into. Yeah. Like snacks multiple times a day, enough cheese to stop up a mouse. <laughs> I'm glad to get, you know, back at it. And and also to kind of put my meals where they should be. They're As fuel. Meals. They're fuel. They're right. not joy. They're not happiness. They're not relationships. You know, I've spent time with the boys. We've played games. We've watched movies. But it wasn't all about the food. It was all about the time and the conversations that we spent together. And I like putting food in its proper place. Now, you're, we're talking about the scale moving. And you said the scale's going down a little bit for you. And it kind of went down a little bit for me. Now it's kind of even. And again, I know a lot of it's water. I mean, I'm not even eating like my all my max calories or anything. But it, I have a question for you. Yeah. Is the scale moving fast enough? Is it ever moving fast enough? I, I'm going somewhere with this. So. Okay. Well, I feel like, especially for me, it's never moving fast enough. I, I don't. I don't think that I'm ever happy with my progress. I right. don't think that, you know, I exercise enough. I don't think I get enough laundry done. I think that we're very hard on ourselves and our achievements. I think that, you know, a week spent being a wife, being a mother, working at a job, it's all been a successful week. Right. I've done it in spite of obstacles like my voice. I've done it in you know, in spite of a busy schedule. And yet I think we're still hard on ourselves. I completely agree. And I know for myself, it's very frustrating because when I lost weight three years ago, it went off like that. Oh yeah. Right? I dropped 30 pounds in a month. I dropped a hundred pounds in six months. Now I'm struggling with like five pounds that I put on during an experiment. And I know it's going to come off, but it's like, gosh, like, First of all, it went on in a second, right? Yeah. But in the past, I've lost this weight and it came off so quickly and I'm so frustrated that it's taking so long to come off. Like, why is it taking 30 days to lose five pounds where in the past, in 30 days, I've lost 30 pounds? And the reason I'm asking is because if you didn't see, and I don't want to talk too much about church, but the other day, Rachel and I had to give the devotions in church. Okay. And the topic that I chose to talk about was patience because patience is my worst quality, right? I'm afraid to nod yes at that, but yes. It is my, I am the most impatient. And in my devotion, I actually said like, I am the guy that will drive 30 minutes out of the way to avoid a five minute traffic jam. Yeah. I pay down here in Florida, we have express lanes and you can pay to ride in these left two lanes and they bypass a bunch of the exits. It's not cheap. I pay to ride in those express lanes, even if the other lanes aren't moving because my mind is like 20 miles down the road, it may be a roadblock and you won't be able to save that time. So I am super impatient and we were talking about it. You know, I started talking about it like with going to us going to amusement parks. But last night I was thinking about how impatient are we with our weight loss, right? Took a lifetime to put it on. It took a lifetime to put it on. Yet I see time and time again and myself included people in the Facebook groups and in forums and even on our channel being like, I've only lost five pounds in the last three or four weeks. Like, what am I doing wrong? Nothing. You're not doing anything wrong. I want you guys to be patient. And I need to learn to be patient. I keep hitting the microphone, sorry. I need to learn to be patient. And like what you just said, we have to stop beating ourselves up. We've got a lifetime to spend with ourselves. Yeah. Right? If you start being hard on yourself and trying to make an enemy of yourself now, it's gonna be really frustrating. For me, the hardest part is maintenance. If you think that losing weight can be frustrating, maintaining your weight, once you get to that weight that you want to be at, once you get to that size, 
that you're like, okay, I feel good here. I feel energized. I feel like I can, I can adult my entire day. I've got, I've got vitality. I've got some health benefits going on. When you get to that weight and that size and it's time to just maintain, you can get really hard on yourself Yeah. trying to maintain it. But I'm 43 years old. I would like to maintain this for the next 40, 50 years. Right. Me and me, we've got time to spend together. Right. We better start establishing some grace for one another, not permission to go backwards, right? but just an understanding that every 24 hours that we stick with our meal plan and our health plan and you know, it's it's a good thing. That is a win. Right. And you're for you're always going to be, I don't want to say battling, but you're always going to be learning yourself, making adjustments because you're gonna go to through times where maybe your energy is up a little bit. Maybe you're gonna go through times where you're moving around a little bit more. And those are the times where the weight may come down a little bit. Yeah. Then you're gonna have times where you get a little sedentary. Maybe, you know, it's raining for two weeks straight and you're not getting out of the house. Right. And that's where your weight may go up. So it's always gonna fluctuate up and down. And you have to look at the long term. So when I talk about patience, it's like be patient with the weight coming off. And what you want to look at is don't look at the short term at, at like yesterday, today, tomorrow, or the past three days. Look at long term. And that's what I was starting to say to myself last night was, okay, so great. You're not where you want to be. You're not where you were a couple of months ago. But I'm not where I was three years ago. Exactly. Where I was you know, 290 pounds. And along with the patience and what you're talking about with grace, we need to have forgiveness for ourselves. Yeah. I think we beat ourselves up too much because we had a slip up. I mean, I know I've been doing it. Like, how did you let yourself get back up to 190 pounds? It's like 190 pounds. You're 49 years old, Joe. Stop complaining that you weigh 190 pounds. You weigh, you're six foot tall. You yeah. know, most, most people don't weigh 190 pounds at six foot tall. And whether they do or not, it's your journey. Right. You've got to live it. You've got to walk it. And the same for you guys. I mean, we better start liking ourselves. That's right. I think that the enemy of our meal plans is this emotion that we have, this negative energy that we have for ourselves. Yeah. I think that that, you know, sometimes we use it to punish ourselves with food. Sometimes we use it to hurt ourselves, badger ourselves with food. We both withhold and we overfeed with those feelings. Right. So rant over. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I was I like thinking it. myself last night, like, wow, you know, Joe, you spoke about patience at church and you're still being impatient. Well, I think it's an ongoing battle. <laughs> yeah. So other than that, Everything for the rest of the week has just been trying to get back into our routines of doing everything. Uh -huh. I did want to show you guys. This came in the mail yesterday. I really want to eat this, but so we can't. tiny. This is Built Bar for those of you who do like Built Bars, which we like them. I like them. Um, to me, they're an occasional treat. They're not like don't eat one every day. But they have two new flavors coming out tomorrow, which is today for you guys, if you're seeing this on Monday. What are the flavors? And what is today? Today's the 19th, right? Yeah, so they're coming out tomorrow. And there's two new flavors, and it is peanut butter brownie. Oh, wow. And banana nut bread. Oh, my goodness. They're only available until I believe it's the 24th. I'll put the exact dates down here below that you can order oh. these. Um, I was going to just, I, we, we can't eat them because we're in a fast right now, but we will be saving these. Uh, so the ingredients are protein mix, which is a whey protein isolate milk, partially hydrologized whey protein isolate, walnuts, dried bananas, gelatin, uh, and then you have chocolate, which is sugar, chocolate liqueur processed with alkali, uh, coconut, oh, cocoa butter, milk fat, soy lecithin, vanilla, water, salt, erythritol, glycerin, maltodextrin, natural flavors and citric acid. And again, remember, they have a thing on their website. They're using uh, re digestion resistant maltodextrin. Right. Um, and then this one is, let's see, the difference in the ingredients. And this one is natural peanut butter and peanuts. So those are the differences. Better have that if it's a peanut butter bar. So if you are interested in these, I'm going to leave a link down below. And the reason I was mentioning is for the next, what is it, four days, they're having a sale of 15% off. You don't need a coupon. 
show. So you get 15% off, and it's not just 15% off on the new flavors, it's 15% off the everything in the store. And you don't need a coupon, and according to the email, you can actually tack on our like coupon code. Two crazy ketos? Yeah. And get discount? Yeah, I don't remember what the discount is, but I know you can use our coupon code. I like that. So I will leave a link for that down below, and I'm hiding these from Rachel. In them. What? 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 What did you say? I think you should share what you're feeling going into next week. You have a keto doctor's appointment. Oh, that's right. So yeah, on Tuesday, um, I am going to meet with Dr. Rob Siwis, and uh, he is a uh, obesity surgeon, a weight loss surgeon. He just started a YouTube channel. And he just recently started a YouTube channel. I will leave a link for that over Rachel's head. He was actually at Omaha. Yeah, he was at Omaha. And he's got some awesome knowledge about snacking, about diabetes. I mean, we talked a little bit when we were in Omaha about, you know, carnivore and how as a carnivore, a lot of times, you know, like carn carnivorous animals will go to bed or go to sleep right after they eat and trying some different experiments. I could listen to him read the phone book. Yeah. He has the coolest voice, in my opinion. He has a cool voice. And so, yeah, on Tuesday, I'm going to go meet with him and uh, I'm going to be getting a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, because I want to monitor things like when I'm eating, why am I eating, what's going through my mind, am I eating because I'm stressed, am I eating because I'm like legitimately physically hungry, I'm curious about what impacts my glucose. Like being married to Rachel. Like being married to Rachel. Um, like things like stress and what actually calms it down. So if I notice that I'm stressed, if I notice my glucose goes up, I'm curious like how quickly it comes down if I just kind of take a second and calm down and do nothing. So I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna wear that for a little while. And he said that I can bring the camera with me. Oh, that's fun. And so we're gonna talk a little bit and uh, make sure you go check out his channel because he's got a wealth of knowledge. Oh yeah, so. I mean, amazing. And local. And he, well, he's local for us. He's down here in South Florida. He's in West Palm Beach. If you're looking for somebody and you're in the like Orlando South area, unfortunately he doesn't take my insurance, but I am willing to pay you know, to go see him. Considering, I know that there's nothing really wrong with me. This is more of like, hey, let's talk. I want to get the CGM. We're going to do some blood work, check out stuff like that. Let's see where we're at. I'm so excited. I'm really excited. So are you ready to get into some comments? Yes, please. Well, can we have a subscriber of the week? Before we do the subscriber of the week, I somebody actually emailed us. And I wanted, I felt like this was something that, uh, a lot of people have questions about. So okay. I wanted to read her question. So it's from a woman named Kim. Hey, Kim. And she sent us an email and said, I have a quick question. I've just subscribed to your channel and your Facebook page. I heard you on Keto Connect, and that's how I found you. Um, I've been doing keto since October, but I'm not losing much weight. I started intermittent fasting, 16-8, for about four weeks, and I'm still not losing much. I watched your 40 hour fast and I decided to try it this week. I did fine until the 26 hour mark and then I became very shaky. I had a bad headache and I was nauseous. I was drinking lemon, ginger water, and that's all. I had to quit at 30 hours because I felt faint. My glucose was 78, my ketones were 2.3. I'm five foot three, 151 pounds, and according to my ketone meter, I'm always in ketosis. Is there anything I can do different because I would like to try the fast again? Okay. So, and she's like, thanks, I enjoy the videos. So I wanted to read this, and this is one of the things that got me to thinking about what I was talking before about patience is mm -hmm. being patient in your weight loss. And I have a couple questions. First of all, like one of the reasons that you stopped keto the first time was the scale wasn't moving, but is your size moving? Right. So that is something to really be looking at. But the other thing you might want to look at is if you're eating keto, you're in ketosis, you're checking your ketones, you're really not cheating, and you're still not losing weight or inches, there's a possibility you're eating too much fat. Right. Because remember, if you're trying to lose weight, and this is how we always tell people to start, when you're starting, you want to keep your carbs under 20. You don't have to eat 20 carbs. You just want to eat, eat less under. than 20 carbs. But don't feel like, hey, I've only got 10 carbs. I need to hit 20 carbs. You don't no. need to do that. 
the, the number that you want to be most focused on is that protein. Make sure you are hitting your protein. You don't want to eat less protein than you're supposed to. Otherwise, you're going to have problems with your hair falling out. You're going to have muscle loss, all of that stuff. But when it comes to fats, when it doesn't have dietary fat that you are feeding it introduced in the food you're eating, it's going to eat your fat. Right. Which is kind of the objective. Now, if you're looking to do keto really for like mental clarity and stuff, you obviously, you want to make sure you're upping that fat because you need to eat it to get more and more ketones. Right. However, if you're trying to lose weight, you want to hit your protein goal, eat some fat to keep you full, to help satiate you. Right. But just eat it till you're full. Don't eat it to hit that macro. Exactly. If you're trying to lose weight. And again, this is one of those things, again, we're talking about, you have to constantly play and see how do you feel? Yeah. You know, so, but if your fat goal is say 120 grams, just pulling a number out and you're completely full and satiated at a hundred grams, let it go. Let it go. Don't try to eat those other 20 grams just for the sake of eating the 20 grams because you want your body to burn the fat that's on your body and not your dietary fat. It's going to go after the dietary fat before it goes after your body fat. Right. So that's the first part of the question, but I really want to talk about the second question that she has in here because I think this one is really important and it's a mistake that a lot of us make when we first get started. I know we made this mistake. Oh, absolutely. And that is... When you are doing an extended fast, 18 hours, 24, 36, 48, 72 hours, you have got to be taking electrolytes. You've got to be taking in those electrolytes because you are getting yourself into a deeper state of ketosis, which means you're losing more glycogen stores. You're going through more electrolytes, especially the sodium, and you're going to experience a lot of issues if you're not doing that. I would almost guarantee that that is the source of your headaches, you're feeling faint, it's the electrolytes. Yeah, especially sodium. So if you're going to do these fast and you'll see Dr. Barry, Dr. Berg, um, Thomas DeLawler, every one of them say when you're doing a fast, it is okay to be taking electrolytes. Now, I'm not talking about zip fizzes. We love our zip fizzes, but technically a zip fizz would break a fast. It does have carbohydrates in it. What you want to be doing is I, the two things I'm going to suggest. Redmond Real Salt. Redmond Real Salt. Put it in every glass of water you drink. Just take a little bit of the Redmond Real Salt, put it in the water. You can get the salt licks that we have. I'll leave a link for them down below. Those are awesome. Suck on those things whenever you want to eat. Just suck on one of those things. I think that it actually helps you in a fast, even like a daily intermittent fast, not even an extended fast. But I mean, if you're just trying to, you know, not eat until two or three o'clock in the afternoon, those salt licks, things, those little pebbles, they're awesome for yeah. that. Yeah. So you can even get teaspoons of salt, throw that in your mouth. And then the other thing you can get, and the one that I would highly suggest is get the keto chow fasting drops. Yeah. And the fasting drops are mostly sodium. The electrolyte drops will keep you maintained in just your normal diet, but the fasting drops are highly concentrated sodium drops and that will keep you going. First of all, it's gonna keep your energy. It's gonna yeah. keep your fast going. It'll help you avoid that nausea, the headaches and all that. So when you're gonna fast, make sure you're replacing your electrolytes, especially the sodium. And we definitely recommend those if you're starting out on keto. Yeah. To get you through the keto, keto flu. flu. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about, let us know down in the comments section, if sometime in the beginning of February, how many people on our channel would be interested in doing a channel-wide like 48 or 72 hour fast? So yeah. let us know down in the comment section if you guys would be interested. I don't know when yet, we'll figure it out. Maybe like somewhere like around the first week or so, second week of February, we'll do like a 72 hour channel-wide fast and I don't know. We'll do something with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let us know. So let's do our comments. We'll start off with subscriber of the week. Yay. Uh, we have a bunch of them. So if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. I'll leave a link down below in the description. It's an incredible group. Totally free. Totally free. There's over 1,500 people in there. And they're the coolest people in the whole world. They are super cool. And yes. the whole point of this group is to help motivate you, to give you a place to go. It's the, really the whole point of our channel to give you support so that if you don't have support somewhere else or if you're just feeling lousy for the day or need a pick-me-up, 
there's people there that are sharing their stories there to help pick you up uh, sharing recipes, sharing deals at different stores, deals they different found, um, new products that they may have located, stuff like that. Yeah. So the only thing we ask you to do is be kind, be courteous, no keto police allowed. Yes. Oh my goodness. So every week we go through our Facebook family group and we find people who have left their stories and we like to share them because our belief is that everybody has a story and your story is going to inspire somebody to stay on track or to get started. Just like we put up this morning on our uh, YouTube channel, right on our channel, we put up Michelle's story oh my from the Omaha Bakery. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna leave a link over Rachel's head. Keto saved her life, literally saved her life. She was going to commit suicide until she tried keto. Yeah, and, and I really believe that there are other people out there who are at a crossroads in their life where they just cannot stand or fathom, you know, moving another step forward in the, the way that they're existing right now. Right. And before they make that decision to end their life, I would love for them to come in contact with this story and yeah. other stories like them. Yeah. And just know that there is hope on the other side of this. You do not have to stop at December 31st. There is a January 1st out there. And we and so many other people want to celebrate you along the way and hold your hand during this journey. You are not alone and you matter to us. Yep. So, so let's, I've got four subscriber weeks. So we're going to try to get through these quick. Okay. Uh, first one is a kind of update report. Yeah. One of our very involved subscribers, Stephanie. Stephanie. And she just celebrated her one year keto anniversary. Wow. And she's just getting around to do a comparison photo and she has lost 100 pounds. Wow. And so here are her before and after pictures from last January to this January. Stephanie, oh my goodness. She looks like her daughter. Yes. You are your own daughter now, ma'am. <laughs> like that is amazing. Is that you amazing? Look incredible. Just yeah. absolutely incredible. Okay, so next one is Jessica. This hey, Jessica. one actually came through email. Did okay. not was not on our Facebook group. I'm going to put Jessica's pictures up here while I read her story. She said, Happy New Year. I wanted to say thank you for making your videos. They are so informative. I've subscribed to your channel and I just ordered my first keto crate. I've lost over 120 pounds in the last three years. Wow. But I am struggling to maintain it off. I've gained 15 pounds back in the last four months. So finding this video has really given me some hope and something to look forward to. Good. I'm so thank you uh, for sharing your weight loss journey and your great videos, reviews, and your recipes. God bless you and your family. Oh my goodness. And again, I mean, just an incredible difference. Wow. So. Jessica. Hot mama alert. Oh yeah. my goodness, you look amazing. And I know we already talked about it earlier in the video, but again, Jessica, let's look at you lost 120 pounds and not look at you gained 15 back. Yeah. I've gained some weight back. Rachel's gained some weight back. It's a long-term journey. Now, if you keep seeing it go that way, maybe let's start going, we'll hey, we'll tweak it. What do we have to tweak? Where, where have I kind of slipped up? Am I snacking too much during the day? But overall, your weight's gonna go up and down. You look amazing. You look amazing. Okay, so next one is Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Tracy said, I'm gonna put her picture up here. She said, I started my keto journey on August 1st, 2018. I haven't looked back and I haven't cheated. The, the key I feel to my success is I haven't let myself say I can't have anything. And I correct others that say, you can't have that on keto. This is my choice and I'm taking back my control. I say to people, I choose not to eat that. My body, my choice, my responsibility. They can ask me how I've lost 65 pounds eating bacon and all that fat. I like helping people understand it's not about the fats. It's about knowing your macros and what foods are important on a daily basis. My rule of thumb when looking at my macros and eating semi-intuitively is to stay under 20 net carbs, hit my proteins, and the fat is a suggestion to help me keep me satiated throughout the day. That's exactly good. what we've been saying. Great. Uh, my best advice for you when you feel like letting things go are too slow or at a standstill, or when the scale isn't your friend, take a selfie for, for perspective. Yeah. I feel great, and I can still see my progress in pictures. Take that, devil scale. Yes. And there's her before picture, 
And there's her after. Oh my gosh, you look awesome. Also very cute boots. <laughs> I love those. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. Yes, man, that is great advice. Yep. That the fat is a suggestion, but I love like hitting your protein and keeping your carbs under 20. That's right. Okay, last one is Jerry. It's a little bit of a long one. Hey, Jerry. But it's an awesome story. So I'm going to put Jerry's pictures up and I'll let you see him while I'm reading this. Oh my gosh, Jerry. Wow. So he said, he wrote, Joe and Rachel, I wanted to submit a quick post to let everyone know that today is my one year ketoversary. I'm down to my goal weight of 175 pounds. Wow. When I started this lifestyle a year ago, I was 247, the heaviest I'd ever been. I will be 61 in March. Poor eating habits and sedentary work environment got me to that point. I'd been dieting off and on for 30 years, but the weight loss more than always came back. When I took the picture on the left a year ago, I knew it was time for a change. My oldest daughter was doing keto for almost a year at the time and had lost 50 pounds. Wow. She often talked to me about keto and the health benefits and wanted me to do keto with her. But until that picture, I was reluctant to make a change. Mm -hmm. January of 2019, she came for a visit. I picked her up at the airport. When I saw her walking down the hallway from the gate, I broke into tears. She was so vibrant and youthful, and I could tell she felt great. She looked fantastic. She was only here for a week, and we talked keto the entire time. She was more than happy to answer all my questions. We ate a few keto meals. I decided that I wanted to make this change. The reason for her visit was my youngest daughter gave birth to my granddaughter earlier in that week. Wow. I knew I wanted to be around to watch her grow up, and if I continued on the path I was on, it wouldn't happen. After the week's uh, visit, my daughter went back home, but we continued to talk through FaceTime and text just about every day. She never got tired of my questions. She was my rock and my motivation. I Googled everything keto and found Dr. Barry's YouTube channel. I found Keto Connect, Watch Autumn Keto, and through her, I found your channel. Awesome. I've watched all the videos, and I love you guys. You're such a blessing. It took me seven months to get to my goal weight. I've been maintaining now for five months. I went from a size 42 to a 32. Wow. From a double extra large to a medium. I feel great and have much more energy. I'm always looking for things to do now instead of sitting on the couch. I go to the gym five days a week and both cardio and strength training. I could not do that a year ago. Wow. The picture on the right, I'm going to put them back up here. The picture on the right is me now. People at my work begin to notice my change and ask me what I was doing, and I was more than happy to talk keto with them. Three of my coworkers have now decided to go keto as well. One is pre-diabetic, one was a type two diabetic. On keto, the pre-diabetic's blood sugar has gone from 144 to the 90s. Wow. The type two diabetic's blood sugar went from 237 to 130. Wow. All three are doing great, feeling great, loving the keto lifestyle. I'm so thankful for the community and the knowledge that you share. Don't ever stop doing what you're doing. You're amazing. You're amazing, Jerry. Oh my goodness. Well, a couple of things that I really love that he brought out. One was his daughter was not tired of answering any of his questions. Right. And and not just Jerry's daughter, but there's so many people, including us, but also people in our, uh, you know, Two Crazy Ketos family group, they're gonna answer your questions. However many questions, there's always somebody to answer the questions. Right. No one is tired, you're not asking too many questions. We want you to get all of the help that you could possibly need. That's right. I also liked him having a clear vision of who is he doing this for. He wanted to be around for his grandbaby that was just born. He, he wanted to share his life with this child. And think about that. Keep that at the forefront of your mind because some days are harder than others and some days are really, really hard. And it's important to, to keep in mind, who are you doing this for? Why are you doing this? When did you decide to get healthy and why are you deciding to, ch to, to stick with it? Because you're having to make choices every single day. You have to make choices at work. You have to make choices in your entertainment time and leisure time. You're gonna have to make choices on vacation. You have to make choices during the holiday. And it's super important to just keep at your forefront. Why are you doing this? And who are you doing this for? Yeah. It makes your choices a lot easier. Yeah. And I, I just, the only thing I wanna say is like, Jerry, your story is, and everybody's story, is what makes us continue to do this, continue to have this channel, you know, continue to put the time and the effort into it. 
because our feeling is always if we can impact one person, one person, then it was worth it. But what we're seeing more and more, like in your story, we impacted one person, and that one person is acting impacting now three more people. Yeah, and you, it's exponential growth, and that is how we're going to be able to change the world. That's how we're gonna be able to change doctors. You have one doctor like Dr. Berry who's out talking and then, and, and then he talks to another doctor and then that, and those, that doctor talks to two doctors and it becomes exponential growth. And the next thing you know, you've got all of these doctors who are starting to look at, hey, you know what, there's an alternative. Well, and that was something that as we were spending some time with Dr. Berry and Dr. Boz and them, as they, they are challenging themselves to spread the message within the medical field. But as we talked, it became very clear, this is a grassroots, boots on the ground thing that we are all going to have to do our part to share our progress. What is happening in your life? When you share your testimony of how you know, you were sick before, you were struggling with this kind of inflammation before, you always struggled with weight before, and now you're having success. As you share your unique success, it forwards. And be kind to your doctors. Like, if, even if your doctor is not supportive, you know, you can agree to disagree, Yeah. but be kind to them and understand that these doctors, like Dr. Boz and Dr. Barry, they're putting their licenses on the line because there are a lot of people that are out there that are part of corporate America, part of the big food industry. They don't want to see this change. So make sure you're supporting all of these doctors who are putting themselves on the line to help educate us on what we can do. Absolutely, because it doesn't seem revolutionary for us to discuss maybe trying to treat certain things using nutrition versus using pills. But if they don't go by the pharmaceutical protocol for whatever that disease is, they could lose their license yeah. very, very quickly. I mean, it becomes a malpractice issue. Yeah. Whereas we're like, well, of course, that seems very common sense right. to discuss that it is revolutionary for them to even discuss nutrition. Yeah. Okay, is you ready to get into the comments? Yeah. So the first one is from Jen. Hey, Jen. Jen wrote, when you read my comments, I felt all giddy inside. I love keto on the couch and how how you highlight all of us as well. I love you guys. Well, we love you and you are precious and we get all giddy when we see you have left a comment. In Search of 76 wrote. Hey, 76. Thank you for sharing my story and my comment. I love you both and your channel has inspired me over and over again. The Redmonds is what saved me along with electrolytes. I use Redmonds every day. I measure every morning and I make sure that I use it all by the end of the day. I love that. And yeah, Redmonds is delicious. I love that you can find them now in Publix and yeah. a lot of grocery stores. Yeah. It's uh, to me, I don't, we, we don't even use pink salt anymore. Now we're only use Redmond's number one. It's local. You know where it's coming from. You know, it's quality. It's sweet tasting. It's got a good taste to it. Uh, it, like Rachel said, it's available in most of the grocery stores. And if you can't find it, there's a link down below. You can use the code two crazy ketos that gets you, I think 15% off, but they also have a lot of other products that we like, like their toothpaste, their clay masks. They're, and yeah. Else. I love their, their facial scrubs. I love their toothpaste. We love their bath salt. However, once you use that clay orange bath salt, it feels fantastic, but you're gonna to wanna to clean your tub afterwards because yeah. it looks crazy. Well, you're taking a bath in minerals. Okay, so uh, Janice wrote. Hey Janice. Um, you all talking about the salt. I bought the Redmond salt, I ordered it. I have the small vial too. I don't think I can eat a small vial like that every day. <laughs> I like salt, but I don't know. Uh, what would you put that much salt on? When I ordered my salt, I didn't think about that salt rock. I wish I did. I hate to pay for all that shipping and handling. Yeah. Okay, so the little vial, that's about how much sodium you should be taking in a day. You don't have to eat that much salt. No. That's how much sodium you should be taking in. So if you're having a zip fizz, there's sodium in that. If you're, you know, all of your food, everything combined, that's about how much sodium. Now, if you take it a little bit less, you're fine, but... What you don't want to be doing is like eating a thousand milligrams of sodium. You need at least 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of sodium a day on keto. We put a little in our water yep. every time we have a drink of water. We salt our food with it before when we're cooking it and then after when we're eating it. And you will find that the longer you're on this, you will have a taste for salt. You taste more and more. I mean, I add salt to keto chow. 
to all of them, all the flavors. I find keto chai to be too sweet sometimes. I add salt to it. I haven't gotten there yet, but I add salt to about everything else. So keto Cindy, keeping it real over 50 wrote. Hey Cindy. What about sleep, Joe? Could that be causing your glucose to be up in the morning? I've heard you say that you don't sleep much. Sleep is one thing that I've had to work on. I thought five hours was enough, but it was causing stress in my body and my brain. Now I sleep seven to eight and a half hours a night. Wow. So yeah, I definitely don't sleep enough. I and I have gotten myself to the five and six hour part. I we was are working at three on three and four hours. So I'm working on it. I know it is something that definitely impacts my glucose. It impacts, you know, my cortisol levels. Um, I'm always trying now to get a little bit more sleep. And one of the things I've even started doing that I, people have made comments like the videos go up a little bit later. I used to work on our videos until like two or three in the morning. It had to be edited before I go to bed because that goes back to my patience thing. Got to keep going until it's done at any cost, right? right. Uh, now my new attitude is if I don't finish it at night, I'll just finish it when I get up in the morning, even if it means I'm going to work a little bit later or if it means the video is going to go up an hour or two later. I'd rather get that sleep in. I would rather you get that sleep in. Yeah. So, but, and again, that's one of the reasons I really want to get an aura ring one day is because I'm interested to see like what impacts my sleep. How long does it take me to get into a deeper sleep? Things like that. But it was nice for me because I was panicking. Like, why is my glucose high? And it was nice for Dr. Barry to be able to say like, hey, you're fine. You've been doing keto a long time. Your body needs glucose. It's just making it. And that's why you're noticing it go down around 10 o'clock. And he was like, the longer you're doing it and you have that, but he's like, your A1C is going to be really low. So I am excited to see how low is it when I meet with Dr. Cywis. It's good to know that keto hasn't suddenly turned against you. Yeah. Don't panic if you are experiencing the same sort of things that Joe has been experiencing. So Holly wrote, Hey Holly. I'm like you, Joe. I'm fine all day and then I want to snack after dinner until I go to bed. Not good. Yeah, that is a huge problem for me. I love to snack between dinner and bedtime. I could not eat all day long. You give me that food at dinner time and then I want dessert. I want something else. It's one of the reasons I like to break my dinner up to make it take a long time to eat. But it's really bad for me and it's even worse if I eat dinner and then I go get in bed to watch TV and it's still a couple hours before I go to bed. Finally, something that Joe struggles with that I do not struggle with. <laughs> uh, Sal Marie wrote, Hey Sal Marie. I regret not doing measurements before I started. In the beginning, I was obsessed with the scale and now I maybe weigh once a month. It's definitely something to not stress over. The health benefits are by far more important. Absolutely. I love that. Yes, we have got to get to a point where you know what you should be eating. You know the quantities that you should be eating. So we shouldn't have to get on the scale, not just once a day, but multiple times a day, right? right. Like where you're weighing four or five times a day. It's just going to frustrate you right. because you are going to go up and down every single time you eat different times of the day, different times of the month. Is that helping your keto journey or is it probably hurting your keto journey, right. upsetting your emotions? And that just feeds into, if you are an emotional eater like me, if I feel sad, now I'm gonna do exactly what I don't wanna do, which is go comfort myself with some more food. Right, and I mean, we all have an unhealthy relationship with the scale. I mean, Rachel's got hers, like she's terrified about the scale going up and down. And then you have some people where the scale has gone up and we do this thing like, oh, I, I ate too many too much food for dinner. Now I'm going to fast for 24 hours. All that really is, it's a form of binge and purging, right? It is. It, you may not be going and purging in the other sense, but you're still binging, you're still purging. Then you have my unhealthy relationship with the scale is that I spent so long being so heavy, I don't ever want to see it to go up, even if it not going up means that I'm not as healthy as I could be. Like, and that's what we were talking about last week, right? The fact that I would love to put muscle on, but don't want to put muscle on because muscle means I've got to gain pounds and I don't want to gain pounds, even if that meant I was leaner. Yeah. I mean, it's it's something's wrong, right? Yeah. But it's just an unhealthy relationship with the scale. And it's something that I have to battle with and I work on every day. Same. So Gail wrote, Hey Gail. No, Joe, you don't shovel snow by putting it on the car. 
She, then she wrote, I'm interested in how your experiment goes with eating before bed and how intermittent fasting would fit into that. I tend to want a snack in the evening also, but if I do, I try to include it with my meal before I close my eating window. Yeah. I usually try to be done with eating before six or seven. And then she asked, what is the keto pizza crust information and website? So uh, the keto pizza crust, it was just a local pizzeria. The bakery, Omaha Bakery, is going to be making it, but she doesn't currently have it available yet. But go follow her Facebook. If you just like hit the like button, you'll get updates and stuff on their channel and on their Facebook page, and you'll be able to find out when they're selling it. Um, as far as the intermittent fasting and the eating late, yeah, I'm very interested. And I did want to address, because some people have talked about it. Actually, it's the next comment, so I'll... But it is something that I'm thinking about doing, but I'm not going to be eating like right when I go to bed, just eating closer to bedtime so that I naturally will fall asleep. But I'm not going to like eat like, hey, I'm going to bed at 11, so let me eat at 1045. Yeah. So Liz wrote, the Liz. only problem with eating close to bedtime is how the food in your belly is going to push back on the valve between the esophagus and the stomach, maybe leaking gastric contents into your esophagus and causing things like heartburn. Wow. Uh, Barrett's esophagitis or asthma-like symptoms, etc. Definitely elevate the head of your bed with books or bricks about four to six inches. Very interesting. Yeah. So I've, I've heard that kind of stuff before. And again, that's why I'm not planning on going, like eating and then immediately going to bed. Just eating and naturally if I fall asleep. The good thing about elevating our head, not a problem. We each sleep with about five pillows. We have a fort, yeah. a pillow fort each. Um, side note, have you noticed that you don't have heartburn or gas really since yes. keto? Don't have heartburn, don't have gas. And here's the funny part. I don't take acid reflux pills. You don't take acid reflux pills. And also the snoring has gone way down for both Thank of us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, the snoring is amazingly better. Jackie wrote. Hey, Jackie. OMG, I thought I was going to die watching you guys clean your rental car. Thank you for not being afraid of sharing anything with us. You made my day. So glad you had a great time at the conference. Thank you for loving us, despite the fact that we are indeed two crazy ketos. We make a lot of hot mess mistakes. That's just the fact of it. So two things with that. Update on the rental car. We did yeah. not get charged. We did get it clean. Number two, thanks for saying that we're not afraid to share anything because the next several comments uh -oh. are going to address the other thing that was in last week's Keto on the Couch. And every comment was so funny, I had to include them. Now I'm afraid. Potty talk. Oh, Lord. So Real Talk Keto wrote, potty talk is hilarious. Bring your magnesium with you, you silly gooses. I'm glad you guys had a good time. And just think, you didn't miss one moment because of all the moments that you were on the toilet. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I spent a large part of what? Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. <laughs> it, it was scary a little bit. You're, you're like, please let me poop. Please let me poop. And then it's like, your wish is granted. Monday was hysterical because it's, again, got home. Bathroom is like, okay, your bodies, you can go now. And the two of us are fighting like, are you in there again? Get out. It's my turn. Exactly. You know, you. it doesn't matter how close you think you are in your marriage or like how tight you are, or like how, how solid this relationship is. When there is just a set amount of hot water or you both need to use the bathroom, that's the real test of a marriage, that's right? right? Because if there's only a little bit of hot water, we will fight to the death over the hot shower. And if we are in the situation we are in, like we were last week coming back from a trip, yeah, it's every man or woman for themselves. Now, the key to the hot water is get in there before your kids. That's the real key. Oh, no, they're not even getting it. Go to grandma's house. <laughs> get a shower there. I do want to say for the magnesium, we do take our magnesium on the trips. And we had this issue pre-keto. And we would take like natural laxatives, like triple, quadruple the dose. It just nothing works when I go on a it's trip. It's like, no, I'm sorry. You're on vacation. Yeah. Uh, Shirley wrote. Hey, Shirley. Yes. What is up with that? I've just called it the travel poops for years. Keto or no keto, it's the same. But two blocks before arriving home, the urge finally hits. The craziest thing ever. We ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> I had to go get toilet paper. Jamie wrote. 
Hey, Jamie. There's no place like home when it comes to the potty. You know, my brother would actually come home from school to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Tara wrote, Hey Tara. You two are cracking me up with the poop talk. I don't usually have a problem going when I travel unless I get constipated from eating too much jerky. Then again, I'm a camper, so I'm used to pooping in the woods. It's a good thing because she travels a lot. That would be terrible. <laughs> I told you these are funny. Renee wrote, Hey Renee. I totally have what's what I've called the nervous pooper when I travel. The worst was when I traveled back to Pensacola to stay with an old friend for a week. A week. A week. I was in so much pain. She was my best friend, so we shared everything, and I really shouldn't have been so nervous. I sat in her bathroom for close to an hour with my weirdo friend trying to give me a pep talk on the other side of the door. You can do playing it! Playing calming music, but nothing. I was so ready to go home, and I was terrified of the plane ride. <laughs> You can just think of the pilot being like, I'm sorry, we're going to have to have an emergency landing. <laughs> Tiffany wrote, hey, Tiffany. oh my gosh, I have tears laughing at the potty talk. Rachel, I don't even want them to think I have a butthole. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I'm a little bit scared of like the low carb cruise. It's like two weeks. <laughs> I could die. Can you imagine like 10 to 14 days? On a cruise where what you do is eat. Oh my, we will sink the boat. Steve for the win wrote. Hey Steve. Usually when I get on a plane, the seatbelt goes on. I'm glued to my seat no matter what. Needless to say, I typically get, typically get dehydrated on the flights. This has worked for years, but on a family trip to Hawaii, the bathroom called in the middle of the ocean. I have never experienced so much nervousness and fear walking to the bathroom. I don't know if I conquered my fear, but I went to the bathroom and I lived to talk about it. It scares me so bad. We managed to go through, what, four flights. I never did have to go back into the airplane potty. To, I don't even want to go pee there. I feel like you're too close to people that you don't know. Well, you've got the people on the other side of the door that are sitting right next to it, and then you have the people that are standing outside of it. It's like a curtain. And they can hear everything, It's right? like a dressing room. I feel like I'm offending the airline people that are like literally this close, but they're- I don't want anybody to hear me. There's a shower curtain. Let, let's take potty talk to another level. Here's a question for you to comment down below. When you go to the restroom and just have to pee- Okay. Do you turn on the faucet so nobody can hear you going? Well, I can't do that in a public restroom. But in a in, a, in someone's home. You go Absolutely. to someone's home, I turn the faucet on. I turn the faucet on in my own home. I turn on the shower and I start the barbecue grill. I try to distract them with like a smell. <laughs> I actually bring purse steak and I throw it on and that's really just a bathroom distraction. Uh, Kavita wrote. Hey, Kavita. OMG, Rachel, I love that coat. Also, didn't Rachel bring poopery? I guess better safe than sorry. I think I'm opposite of a lot of keto people. I've lost 70 pounds so far, but I'm still in the same size. I must have really been squeezing into my clothes before. Oh, man. I have some jeans that, like, I have been in for a really long time because, yeah, I was trying to squeeze New York into Richmond. I had to Me have... Too. A running start, jump on the bed. Have you guys used the bed to get into pants? Trampoline time. Trampoline, trampoline bed. You put your feet in, jump. <laughs> I did lose my first 30 pounds. I didn't go down a size. I lost 30 pounds. I lost inches, but I didn't go down a size because I was wearing a 4244, but probably should have been a 4648. It's bad when you jump off the bed and you don't stick the landing <laughs> and your pants are still kind of at knee level and you don't get it all the way. How many times have I ripped the belt holes off of my jeans? Done that too. Trying to get them off. Okay, Ron Ron wrote. Hey, Ron Ron. OMG Joe, whenever I travel, my body shuts down and I can't go. It takes days to get consistent again. The one thing about vacations that I hate. Also, when I worked in the ICU, we would monitor patients' blood sugars throughout the day, whether they were diabetic or not. Illness and disease processes already affect the blood sugar, but also the stress of being sick and hospitalized. Oh, wow. That makes sense. Yeah. So if you didn't see, Rachel interviewed Nurse Cindy. I'll leave a link for that video over Rachel's head. But Nurse Cindy is currently monitoring her blood sugar to determine eating and things like that, which is why I want to get the CGM. 
Paige wrote. Hey, Paige. I'm in EMS, so of course we find potty talk hilarious. LOL. I loved it. And I seriously laughed hysterically when Rachel said butthole. I know. We are definitely a weird breed. But seriously, though, very informative video. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. <laughs> but I still want to keep it like no one knows if I have a butthole. Okay. Debbie wrote. Hey, Debbie. Rachel. You are a baby doll. We don't do those things. Come on. We only emit glitter, rainbows, and lavender scents. That is exactly right. <laughs> so last one. Diana wrote. Hey, Diana. I was just going to post in the keto family group about how I've had an issue with sweets. I'm the only one doing keto in my house, and there are sweets in this house, so I'm craving them. And I've fallen for it at the same time, but your information about how to do the salt blocks or just some salt was very good information. Thank you so much. I will be trying this as soon as possible. Please pray that it works. I can do keto all day, come home, and I see what the rest of the house is eating, and I just want to scream. I know I can do this. Thank you so much. Well, you know what immediately I start thinking of as soon as I hear the name Diana? What? Wonder Woman. That's Wonder Woman's name is Diana. You've got this, girl. You are not alone. And we are with you. And there is all those people in the Facebook family group that are celebrating with you. I know it's hard when you're surrounded by food that you crave and maybe, you know, other people in your household are on, you know, different menus. We've had that in our own home. You know, smelling fresh baked bread can be challenging right. to have to overcome. If you see sweets during holiday time, that's really challenging, but you got this. I know you can do this. We're excited for you, and I can't wait to hear more status updates from Wonder Woman, because that's you, Diana. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Please, again, if you aren't a member of our Facebook family group, use the link down below. Go join it. Make sure you're leaving your story with some pictures so that we can share it, so that your story can impact somebody else's. Absolutely. Make sure you go down in the comment section, leave some questions, some comments, and things on this week's Keto on the Couch, and we will answer them next week on Keto on the Couch. We sure will. Uh, make sure you join us this Thursday, 9.30 p.m., Eastern Standard Time for our live stream. We will be live streaming every single week at 9.30 Eastern Time. And I do plan on having a voice. And you plan on having a voice. We'll see, though. So like I said, that is our video for today. So please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time we answer poop questions, <laughs> you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.